Hi, Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography and Photographer's Freedom with you again. Today I'm out at Arawara Headland on the mid-north coast of New South Wales. And in the rock pool just behind me here, there is a sea turtle resting. All right, so here's the little guy or girl. Um, I can't really tell. Last weekend when we were here in that pool over there, my daughter and her friends rescued one that had been bitten by a shark, we think, on the front right flipper. You can take a shot of this turtle from a standing position, sure. What I suggest you do to make things a little bit more interesting, just take a couple of photos from like down this angle sort of thing. Get around your subject, all the way around. Have a look at different angles, down low, up high. You can take a shot from above looking down, which we could do today because of the rock there. That might be interesting. All right, I promised you some tips in Lightroom on how to get rid of the glare on shots taken from above water. And as I said in the video in part one, which is linked up the top for you to have a look at now if you haven't seen it, the conditions on the day were actually quite good. So there wasn't a lot of glare on the water above the turtle. So what I'm doing is using this photo here that I took on a different day. And I'm going to show you, first of all, how to do some edits in the basic panel here to remove the glare on the water and I'm actually going to provide you with a free preset download that will help you to get started on removing glare from your water shots and I'm also going to give you an adjustment brush preset as well up here which we'll use later to do the same thing. So the first thing that you should do in Lightroom is do your lens corrections. I do this on import. When I import the photos, the lens corrections are applied and I've done a video about how to apply lens corrections in Lightroom and that's linked up the top right now. So go and check that out if you like. So what you do is you come down to your lens corrections tab, you click that arrow there, left click that arrow, that'll drop it down and you select you could tick the box on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And what that does is it gets rid of the chromatic aberration, which is the coloration you get around the edges of things in, uh, in like bright photos. I'm not really sure if this photo had any in it. It may have had a little around the turtle's neck there on the brighter parts of it. It's just like a purple coloration or a green or a blue shade, sometimes a pinky shade around the edges of things. A lot of lenses do it, it's, it's quite normal. So Lightroom will remove that. And then you have enable profile corrections. What Lightroom does there is it reads your camera and the lens that you're using for this shot and it will take away the curvature that the lens puts onto the photo as you can see if you're watching the corners up here or down here anywhere there if I click it it brings those corners sort of out a bit more and makes the image look a bit more flat so we do that first and then we can come up to our basic panel up here and I'm going to just do a few little things here. The first thing that I see up here in my histogram is this shot seems to be a tiny bit towards the right hand side. So it's probably, it's not overexposed, but I could bring the exposure down a little. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to drop that down to 0.1 now, negative 0.1, just to make a little bit of a difference to that. What I'm then going to do is up the contrast because this image is also quite flat. So I'm just clicking, left clicking and dragging on the numbers here. I'm going to take it up to around about 17, I think looks pretty good. Then what I'm going to do is I don't think the highlights in this image need adjusting. They're, it's not, it's not clipping or anything. This is your little clipping highlight, clipping indicator up here. It's not lit up so that my highlights are not clipping. So what I'm going to do is leave the highlights alone for now. I will adjust the shadows. This helps to get rid of a little bit of the glare from your water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop these shadows down and we'll see how far we wanna go with this. So you can see, if I drop it all the way down, you can see you lose pretty much all the glare on the seaweed down here and, a, and the turtle is looking pretty good too. We're not, using, not losing much glare from up the top here, but it's still doing quite a good job. I might back it off though. We'll go to about minus 55 there, looks good. You can always check 
the before and afters by hitting your backslash key. So this is before, this is after. So you can see we're already getting rid of a bit of that glare, especially in the foreground of the shot. Now what I'm going to do is set my white point. I'm going to hold Alt, that's Option on a Mac. Left click, hold that left mouse button and drag to the right until I see some dots appear on the screen. That means areas that are clipping. And then I'm just gonna back it off until we don't have clipping. So that's at 28 on this one here. So that's quite good. If I just see, yep, 28 is good. And then we do the same thing with the blacks, hold Alt or Option, left click, drag it down until you start to see some color coming in. We're just, I'm not gonna, leave too much in there just a little bit of those in there because you can see that's creating quite a dark area down here and it's actually telling us that we're clipping and if i turn that on we can no, you can't see it down there it must be somewhere else in the image but that's okay it looks fine so we're going to leave it there at minus 46. now the best thing to get rid of haze from water glare is of course dehaze the dehaze slider which is really really awesome but it can be overused it can look quite terrible if you use too much of it so we're just going to dial it up here whoops i accidentally clicked it so you can see right there that no just no that's terrible all <laughs> right so we're going to back it off here just backing it off 22 looks pretty good i think so if you ever want to check the before and afters of the last step you just did, just head over here to your history panel. If it's not visible, just click the, the arrow there on the history. And if you go back to before our dehaze, it looked like that. After our dehaze, it looks like that. And that's pretty good. If I hit the backslash key before and after, already it's looking really quite good. What also might help here in this case with the light glistening on the sand here under the water. To make that a little bit more prominent, we could use our texture slider. And again, this is one that you don't want to overdo because if I overdo it, that that looks pretty terrible. So I'm just going to back it right off to maybe about, where are we? Maybe about 14. We'll try that. So that's before the texture, that's after. So you can see it, it just, it's very subtle, but it's made those areas of light pattern there on the sand a little bit better. So that looks pretty good. That's a pretty good result. It's taken a fair amount of the glare away. I'm not really impressed with the color of this image. So this is where you might want to play with your temperature slider or your tint slider up here. So we'll try temp first. It's a little bit bluey coloration for my liking. So that's way too far. Just gonna sort of move it towards the greens a little bit more. Maybe 6,550, we'll see. We'll just uh, go before and after. See, it had that kind of bluish tint to it. And we've got rid of that quite well there. I might try the tint a little bit too, move it a little bit towards the greens. No, that's too much green. I'll just undo that. So again, before and after, that's looking quite good. I think a little bit of contrast might help. No, it's way too much, we'll undo that. In the video description below, there's a link to this preset here, this PF water glare preset. So that's Photographer's Freedom water glare preset. So you can have that for yourself to have a go with and then you can always adjust the settings. Uh, I will provide you with instructions on how to download it and install it and then you can just come over here to your presets panel and you go into your user presets and it will be right there and you just click on it and that will bring up those settings. Obviously you're using it on a different image to this. So it's it's kind of like a starting point. You need to adjust things from there. So you can play around with your sliders over here and adjust it to what looks good for your image.
So now I'll show you how to do the same thing, but we're going to use an adjustment brush. So this is your adjustment brush icon up here. So if you click on that, you get a whole lot of adjustment brushes in here. Now I've got quite a few presets. This, um, this area in here is my presets. So your list may not look as long as this. This is really helpful to apply an effect to just one part of an image. So what we did back here with our basic controls is what's called a global adjustment. It applies to the hot image as a whole, so across the whole image. An adjustment brush can be done to any part of the image because as you can see, you get a brush and you can just brush it in to certain parts of your image. So that can be really handy. So what I'll do first of all is I'll click down here on reset. So we'll turn this image back to what it was before and then I will have to go and close this brush down. I'll have to go and do my lens corrections again, so I'll quickly do that. Then I will do some slight adjustments. I'll do similar adjustments here, like the exposure coming down here. Maybe I might try negative 0.2 there. Bit of contrast, perhaps. Not too much because this brush we're going to use is going to provide a lot of contrast anyway. I'll just have a look in the brush here and see what it is actually doing. It's doing contrast, highlight, shadows. Yeah, so I won't bother with any of that. I won't bother with any more of that in the basic slider. We'll just open our brush now. This will be included in the link in the video description and there'll be instructions on how to install it and open it up. So when you uh, get into your effect, uh, when you get into your adjustment brush here, you can click on these little arrows here and this will bring it up. And what you're looking for is the haze killer brush. Now this is actually a brush that's designed to remove haze from landscape photos, but it does a really great job of removing haze from the top of your water as well. So to change the size of your brush here, you can see my brush changing size in the center of the screen there. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. You can also do that down here. Oh, sorry, I closed that panel. You can also do this down here in the brush settings under size, just drag it to the right to make it bigger, to the left to make it smaller. You can also control the feathering, so how far beyond the brush the effect will bleed out or feather out. So I might leave that at around maybe 50. So you can also adjust your flow here. The flow adjusts the speed at which your brush applies the effect. So if it's at 100, it will apply 100% if it's at zero or down lower or at one sorry can't go to zero because then it wouldn't be applying at all it will um, apply much less so I'm gonna leave my flow at about maybe 60 there we'll leave that at 60 the density is how much of the effect is applied so if it's really dense, 100, that's 100% of the effect. If it's at zero, it's not applying any effect at all. So we're gonna leave that at 100. Auto mask here, that is Lightroom's way of um, automatically masking areas that you may or may not want the effect on. So let's say if you have a landscape image and you have a mountain range and you just want to apply an effect to the sky, you can click the auto mask checkbox there and that will, Lightroom will attempt to it'll say, okay, I can see the mountain edge here and I'm not going to apply the effect below your sky or vice versa. So it's, it's just an automatic mask, but we're not going to use that right now. So I'm just gonna make my brush a little bit bigger and I'll left click my mouse, hold it and simply paint this effect in. And you can see how amazing this is. Like, check this out. How good is this? It's really doing such a great job. And the best part is, like I said, unlike the basic adjustments where it's a global adjustment, we can add more or less to certain areas of our image. 
So that's pretty good already. I'm happy with that result. And um, the only thing I may do here, so we have to, once you're finished, you need to come down to close here at the bottom of your brush panel. So close that off. And if you need to go back in there and edit the brush again, you just click your adjustment brush and you can see up here this little dot on the screen, which is where you started painting. If you click that, you can then come over here, it'll open the panel and you can adjust your settings in there. Okay, so we'll close that down for now. And that is quite good. I'm still not happy with the color of it. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit with our temp here to about there, I think might be good. And if I hit my backslash key before, after, amazing, right? And that was so quick. So all the links you need are in the description below.